Hey guys, welcome to our channel Coders Arcade. In today's video, we are going to talk about more on Git and today we are going to learn how we can install Git onto your system. So here right now I am in my Chrome browser. Here in my Chrome browser, you need to open your browser, whatever browser you want to open onto, whatever browser you are using. So you can use it onto Chrome or any browser. On this, you need to search for git-scm.com and here, press if when you press enter, you will get onto this site right here. So here, you need to go to the download section. So either you can just go for this download 2.32.0 uh, uh, for Windows or you can go for the Mac build. Let me show you clearly. If you click onto this downloads, you will see there are different different downloads available. So if you are a Mac user, you can just download for Mac from here onto this. The second option is for Windows, and the third option is for Linux and Unix users. So right now I'm onto my Windows. So I'm going to click onto this Windows icon right here and uh, your downloading is started. So here I'm going to select the directory where I want to download the setup. Now, right now I am onto my desktop and I'm fine with it. So I'm going to just save it. And there you can see that our download has been started and our download has been completed. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click onto this. I'm going to open this and there you go. So git, you can see git 2.32.0 setup. You can see 2.32.2, which is the latest version right now. As for now, uh, whatever version you will get in the future at the time of your downloading, you can download that and everything will work fine. So it is not that of a big deal for the version. I'm going to just press on to next. And you can see this is the place where it is going to install. So in C program files and git. So I'm okay with it. So I'm going to uh, click on to the next. You can see there are different different options that it is going to show us. So one of the things that you need to remember is you need to click on to this uh, git bash should be checked onto your Windows Explorer integration and uh, git GUI should also be ticked and uh, associate dot git file configuration for the default text editor should be ticked and also associate dot sh files to the to run with bash also should be ticked now any of the other options you can leave but these are some of the options here whatever i have ticked onto my setup you need to take on to that so these all are important now i'm going to press on to next and you can see it is asking me to create the start menu folder or not. So it will create uh, the folder here onto a start menu here. I don't want that. So I'm just going to click on to don't create a start menu folder and I'm going to click on to next. If you want a start menu folder, you can go ahead and uncheck this option and you will be fine. Now I'm going to click on to next and now it is asking me choosing the default editor used by Git. So by default, use Vim is selected. Now, one of the main things that you have to remember that Vim is the toughest, the most complicated Git editor that you will be getting. So you don't have to use Vim. So we are going, not going to use this Vim. Vim is a very hard tool. As you can see here, the Vim editor, while powerful, can be hard to use. Its user interface is unintuitive and its key bindings are awkward but this is what git uses by default so we are not going to use this i'm going to change it so right now i'm going to use the visual studio code as default editor so here there are two options use visual studio code as git's default editor or uh, use visual studio code insiders at git default editor i'm going to click on to this upper option which is use visual studio code as default git editor and there you go so you can see here Visual Studio Code is an open source, lightweight and powerful editor run on desktop applications. This is what I want uh, because we are going to use Visual Studio Code as a GUI editor as I have told you before in our earlier video. Now I'm going to click on to next and uh, you see here adjusting the name of the initial branch of new repository. So it is recommended to use this option, let git decide. If you click on to this override the default branch, then every time you create a repository, you need to set the initial branch name of that repository. So we don't want that. Let git decide should work for us. 
uh, we are going to select this and we are going to click on to next so here are the different options that you get here so adjusting your path or environment how would you like to use git for the command line so you can see here use git from git bash only this is the most cautious choice for your path will not be modified at all you will only be able to use git command lines tools from git bash so another option is git from command line and also for third party software recommended so this is the recommended uh, settings for windows because if you select use git from git bash only then you will be able to only use the git bash and you won't be able to use git gui tools in some cases so there you need to select on to this one this option here which will allow the third party softwares to use for git so as you can see here it's already recommended and this option adds only some minimal git wrappers to your path to avoid cluttering your environment and optional unix tools you will be able to use git from git bash command prompt and the windows powershell as well as any third party software looking for git in path so we want this option because we need our visual studio code and maybe git kraken or source tree to access our git repository to access our git path so we are going to use git from command line and also from third party software so in this case, third party softwares are Visual Studio Code, Git Kraken and Source Tree that I have already told you before. So this is what we are going to use. Now, the third option is use Git and use Git and optional Unix tools for the command prompt. We are not going to use it because it, this option really works for Unix and Linux users. But since we are a window user, we are going to use this option right here. So Git from command line and also from third party software. Then I'm going to click on to next and here uh, there are two options so choosing HTTPS transport backend so here in this case you need to select to use the open SSL library why because if you click on to the use the native window secure channel library what this is going to do this is somewhat somewhat a complicated process for git setup we don't want that this is just for the HTTPS transport backend which is which is going to a link with your repository online in your cloud for when you will be using github so we don't want that right now we are going to use this uh, the default use the open ssl library server certificate will be validated using the ca bundle.crt file this is okay for us and then we are going to click on to next now you can see there are different different options here uh, configuring the line ending conver conversions so you can see the there is checkout windows style commit unix style and the first one is for your windows recommended for your windows operating system or your mac operating system you can choose this for your windows and uh, the second one is recommended for unix and uh, the third one is recommended for uh, the other operating systems like unix or linux but here you can see here uh, if you watch closely you can see here this is recommended settings for windows so first one is the recommended settings for windows as i have told you before so we are going to use this and here you can see the recommended setting is on for unix so we don't want this or this we are going to use the first option so check out windows style commit unix style line endings and then we are going to click on to next now there is another option right here configuring the terminal emulator to use with git bash so here it is asking about the it is talking about the git emulator for windows so in this case use min tty which is the default terminal for msys2 or you can use the use windows default console window so you can see git bash will use min tty as a terminal emulator which is sports as resizable window non rectangular selections and unicode fonts windows console programs uh, must be launched via win tty or work in, to work in min tty and you can see that the second option is use windows default console windows so just because we are going to use git bash we are going to use use min tty and this has no limitations when we are using on uh, with the git bash but in this case uh, we have some limitations so limitations such as you can see here um, there is no scroll back needs to be configured to use the unicode font in order to display non-ascii characters or non-ascii characters you can say correctly 
and and prior to windows 10 its windows was not freely resizable and it is not allowing the rectangular text sections we are just going to use the default git bash uh, terminal emulator so we are going to use um, min tty so if you are not uh, familiar with uh, the uh, linux commands you can go ahead and uh, use this one but since we are going to see how uh, we are going to use the command command line which is the git bash mostly we are going to use this option and we are going to use just because we are going to use the git bash more often that, that is why i'm going to select this option so use min tty then i'm going to click on to next and you can see choose the default behavior of git pull so here default which is fast forward and merge so we are going to use this one so this is the standard behavior of git pull fast forward current branch to the fetched branch when possible otherwise create a merge comment we are going to use this default and then we are going to click on to next so the next option that we get is uh, choose the credential helper so git credential manage core this is new then this is the git credential manager depreciated and this is none so i'm going to use this new one uh, it's just for your help it will give you all the commands for the terminal if you are not familiar with them I'll, I'm going to use the it to show all the commands. So that is why I'm going to click on to this git credential manager core and I'm going to click on to next. And here you just need to enable the file system caching. Now I'm going to press on to um, next. And then uh, we don't want any experiment. So we don't want to enable any of this experimental support for pseudo controls or enable experiments for built-in file system monitor. We don't want any experiments to be happen with our Git setup. So I'm just going to ignore both the settings and you can also ignore the settings if you don't want to take tensions uh, in later on into a course. Uh, you just click on to install and you have to wait for the program to be installed. Okay, so our program is about to get installed and here as you can see our Git has been installed. Now completing the git setup wizard, I don't want to launch the git bash, I just want to view the release note, I don't want that as well, so I need to click on to finish. So we have successfully installed git onto your computer. Now to check the version for our git and check if our git is properly installed or not, I am going to open my command prompt which is cmd, if I write here cmd and if I write here git dash dash version and if i press enter you can see git version 2.32.0.windows.1 here as you can see our git has been installed now the another version for the git bash is let me open my file manager here i'll just go into my files here I am going to uh, go to my git folder and let me create uh, one folder here. We are going to use this for git, uh, let's say workspace. This is a temporary folder that I am creating you to show you uh, how we are going to use for repositories. Here inside a git workspace, I am going to just, uh, you can see on, the, if I right click here, you can see there are two options available now, git GUI here and git bash here. So if I click on to git bash here, you can see this is our git bash that has gone installed onto a computer. As you can see here, uh, it is using the min w64 compiler, which is by default installed into my VS code, which is a uh, use, which has been using for my C programming. So it's that compiler. And now I'm going to show you how we can check for the git setup has been installed or not if the git has been installed properly or not so again the same as we have done in the cmd you can just type here git space dash dash and version and if i press enter you can see here as well git version 2.32.0 is been installed so our git has been properly installed let me just zoom it out you can see git version 2 and let me just make it big you can see that our git version has been installed this is the version that we have installed properly all right so this way you have installed your git properly into our computer from our next video we are going to see more on git and we are going to start 
our tutorial properly using this git bash we are going to use or write our all the commands for git manage our repositories from here and then we are going to move on to our rest of the course so thanks for watching i hope you have understood what i wanted to teach you here and thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one so this is all about this video guys thanks for watching hope you like the video and if you like it then tell us in the comment section below if you have any doubts then post them in the comment section i will definitely try to clear those doubts also like share and subscribe to our channel coders arcade and press the bell icon so that you will get a notification when we post our new video thank you happy learning